Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the feedback mechanism. We gave a model of the feedback mechanism. It all to do with temperature regulation. In this video we're going to cover the next stop point. And this stop point is all about why we can find species living in you know, the freezing cold and in the really hot deserts, but we can't find one type of species in all those environments. So what I mean by that is we can't find a polar bear both in the Antarctic and living in the forest somewhere. We can only find the polar bear in the Antarctic and the grizzly bear in the forest. We can't find them in both area, both environments. So the actual dot point says identify the broad range of temperatures over which life is found compared with the near limits for individual species. So identify the broad range of temperatures over which life is found. So we can find life you know, in the freezing cold and in the really warm um, temperatures. But the individual species, so for example, that individual species such as the polar bear, we can only find that in the cold areas. We usually can't find that in the warmer areas. And we're talking about why this happens. So the first thing that might pop to mind is, yes, it's true. You know, we do find, for example, the polar bear only in the polar environments. But for humans, it's a bit different. So humans, we can find them in different kinds of environments. So, we, for example, we have you know, the Eskimos, which they can be anywhere up to minus 20 degrees Celsius. We have you know, the, the Sahara Desert, which can get really high temperatures, such as 45 degrees Celsius, roughly in that area. That's quite average for the Sahara Desert. And then Melbourne would be in between, so Melbourne might have 20 to 25 degrees Celsius as its average. So in this case, we find them over broad ranges of temperatures, but all the same species, the species of the human species, the Homo sapiens. But we're cheating to, we're kind of cheating to a degree. So, I mean, first of all, we have to keep our constant internal environment the same. So our body temperature has to be at 37 degrees Celsius at all times. And even though the Eskimos, whilst they might be living in that 20 or minus 20 degrees Celsius, you can see they have clothes, they have shelter, their igloo huts, all this helps them to not actually experience at minus 20 degrees Celsius, they experience a lot less than this uh, in terms of temperature a lot more, so they would be feeling their body temperature would still be 37 degrees Celsius, their body temperature would be the same, even though their external, their ambient temperature is a bit different. And the way they do that is through clothes and shelter, and even with here, with the desert people, if it's 45 degrees Celsius, they'll be sweating a lot they will be doing, they also have light clothes. All this helps them to keep it at 37 degrees Celsius. And people in Melbourne also have a body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So if, for example, if the Eskimos had no proper winter clothes or no shelter, then they wouldn't survive. So they have to have ways to be able to cope with the environment. And same thing with the um, people in desert, living in deserts. If it were a bit higher, so let's say it's 50, 55 degrees on, on the average. This is actually temperature that human beings can't survive for long. They would also die. So they have to keep it at still a moderately high temperature. And they have to have ways to cope with that. Whereas people in Melbourne, they're usually quite happy because that temperature is really good for, for just optimum function. Um, but yeah, so even human beings, even though we find them in different uh, kind of environments, they still have ways to cope with it. Whereas other species aren't that lucky, they aren't as adaptable to different environments, and we can only find them in one kind of environment. So, for example, a polar bear can't just get rid of its um, skin if it wants to go to Melbourne. Um, if he, in a zoo in Melbourne, they would have to make it really nice for the polar bear to be able to properly thrive in that environment. And why this happens is all about enzyme activity. So, the reason why we have to keep a very sort of stable internal environment is because of enzyme activity. So these kind of graphs, we've shown them in the last couple of videos, and these graphs are all about enzyme activity. So we have here, we have our enzyme activity on this side. So the higher it is, the more reactions they do per second. So you can imagine this might be, again, this might be 70 reactions per second that the enzymes help speed up. And if, it's, if it were lower, it might only be 10 reactions per second. And the other side, we've got temperature. So this is the temperature part. So for us humans, because we have an ideal temperature of about 37 degrees Celsius, our enzymes, most of our enzymes in the body, work best at this 37 degrees Celsius. 
that's for humans, the species of humans. Now there are some thermophile, these are usually bacteria. And they might live in a really hot environment. And because they're used to different kind of temperatures, you can see their optimum function for their enzymes for thermophile bacteria might actually be a lot closer to you know the 55 degrees Celsius. So they might have a constant internal environment of about 55 degrees Celsius. And if it goes too low or too high, so either this way, too low or too high, then the enzyme activity drops down. That's why we want to keep a constant internal environment about 37 degrees Celsius because we have to do that for enzymes to work properly. Now, when it comes to here, we have another graph. So same thing, we have 37 degrees Celsius. This one might be our the human or most animals have it rough, roughly here. So this is the human enzymes that live in our body have it at about 37 degrees Celsius. This might be for a polar bear. Not, not actually not a polar bear, it's a bad example because they have to keep a constant internal environment, they're mammals. But this might be a bacteria living in the Antarctic. So in a really, really cold environment, Antarctic. And this here might be, again, the bacteria living in the sort of steaming hot uh, ponds, sort of the thermophiles, thermophiles bacteria. Thermo, thermo means temperature and phile means loving. So these are bacteria that love hot temperatures. So in this case, we've got three different types of species. One bacteria which is living in the Antarctic, and one bacteria living in the sort of hot ponds, and another human being species, and they all have their ideal temperatures. So we can only find them in these ideal temperatures. So what I mean by that is we have here, we have our this is just a cell or a bacteria itself. This one here is a bacteria itself. And with bacterias, they will be looking very similar. They all look very similar, but because they're all adapted to different environments. So for example, we have our um, bacteria which lives in the freezing cold, so in the Antarctic, so freezing cold. We have our bacteria which lives in the corner of the normal tropical environments, so this is sort of your tropical environment. And again, your bacteria which is living in your 60 degrees, so this one might be a thermophile. So we have what we have here is we have all of these are cells, these are be bacteria cells. And the little dots you can see in the middle are these enzymes. And if you remember what enzymes do, enzymes do a lot of things in the body. Enzymes help speed up reactions. That's their main function, but such reactions as making glucose, making uh, proteins, all that kind of stuff. That's what enzymes do. Now, every bacteria makes lots of these enzymes because they need them to survive. But each of these enzymes, depending on the bacteria, will be adapted to a different kind of environment. So you can see here, this is the, again, the structure of a cell. And inside, so if we can hear the plasma membrane, so this membrane here. Inside there, we have enzymes. So these enzymes that make ATP, so enzymes that make ATP for a bacteria are inside this plasma membrane. But what you find is the enzymes that make ATP for a bacteria that lives in the freezing cold will have their optimum temperature at that zero degrees Celsius we mentioned earlier, or that five to zero degrees Celsius. And if you bring them out, so if you bring the same bacteria into a different environments, which is your 37 degrees Celsius area, it will die because it does its optimum function is a lot lower. Whereas this bacteria, which lives in a tropical environment, it will have its enzymes being adapted to that 37 degrees Celsius. So if you take it either into the cold or to warm areas, it will also die. And the 60 degrees Celsius bacteria will be best adapted to that 60 degrees. Again, you take it to low, or too high from that, away from that six degrees, it will die. So identify the broad range of temperature over which life is found compared with the narrow limit for individual species. We can find these you now in zero degrees Celsius or in six degrees Celsius, but they're all different species. The same species can usually only be find, found in certain limits in terms of their uh, temperature. And that limit is their optimum metabolic efficiency for the enzymes. So for zero degrees Celsius, the limit would be you know just around that zero degrees Celsius. For 37 degrees Celsius, it would be plus minus a couple of degrees from that 37 degrees Celsius. That's their limit. Whereas we can find them in all other kind of environments. And the reason why was because of uh, enzyme function. So remember this kind of diagram? We had that in a couple of videos back as well. This here was our enzyme. And what do enzymes do? Enzymes break down substrates 
and they break down substrate, so this is a substrate, by having it bind to this here, which is the active site. And once it does it, it will break it in two, and then two new products are formed. Uh, that's normal, so that's when you have your ideal optimum temperature. But if it's too far, too low from its ideal, what happens is it, this becomes denatured. What I mean by denatured is it actually becomes badly shaped, like this, which means this won't fit properly anymore. And now nothing will happen, so this is denatured. So if the enzyme is denatured because the temperature is not ideal, then the metabolic efficiency, which is how fast the enzymes work, will go down, which means this no longer gets broken down. So if this were, for example, glucose and it's being broken down into ATP, if this doesn't happen if, because the enzyme is denatured, that means the actual bacteria or the human being, whatever it is, will die. So the bacteria, the human being, whatever organism it is, needs to make sure its enzymes work in an environment which is optimal for it to have optimal function. That's why we can find the actual species of bacteria only very given small areas, such as temperature areas, but we can find them in lots of different broad areas because they're all different kinds of species and they're all adapted to their own environment. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.